All right, y'all, we are back. We are on vlog numero cinco. <laughs> All right, so pretty much a bait, as you can tell. Diet face in full effect. That probably started about, I'd say, like right after Rising Phoenix happened. That's when I started like dropping weight pretty pretty good dropping body fat more so not necessarily weight at that point um then i noticed i started noticing the shift in the like little cheekbones i was like oh i'm getting slim y'all so that picked up once we got back from filming in dallas at evigen headquarters and then it's just been picking up ever since and now we're just going full my daddy called sucked up He's like you sucked up girl you sucked up and that just means you know so that's, that's what sucked up means so that's actually one of my favorite parts of prep is I love diet face. I don't know about other people, but I love diet face. I love a slim face. I love when you get to see people's bone structures and draw lines. I don't know. I love it. Maybe it's just me. I, don't know. I love the veins. I love everything. I love all the things from improvement season to prep. I love all the things. Just different time and place for everything. So we went diet face. Um, let's see. Progress has skyrocketed um, these last... Yeah, last two weeks. So yeah, it's been two weeks since the last video. These last, from the last two weeks, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot has changed, which has been pretty cool to just see the difference between preps year to year. But that's why going back to our very first vlog of when I say just stick to the plan and when your body is ready, it'll, as long as you're doing everything you need to do and the coaching is where it needs to be with all those factors in place, everything will work out. And so that's why, again, was never worried about it. Um, and then next thing you know, everything takes off so let me make sure i stay on track go to my little notes okay yes so there always comes a point in prep where um they always say the cliche like their goals wake you up like no but for real they do so generally my time here i wake up at 5 30 in the morning every day but as soon as my body feels like all right it's time to really get moving it's time to get moving i start waking up at like 4 30 then it goes down to four and probably in the next week or two, I'll probably begin to be like three o'clock just because that's what my body does. It's just like, all right, ready to go. But my sleep score will still be 85, still be 90. So I still get quality sleep the entire prep. Um, so when I get up, I just get up because it's just, it just ready to go. It's like, all right, I got something to do. I got cardio to do. The only time I will stick to my regular wake up time is when I'm doing a check-in, a way to check-in because I do the same check-in at 545 every single check-in day i don't check in the second before i check in at 5 45 and that's no matter what i stop eating at the same time of day i stop drinking at the same time of day all those variables must be perfectly in place before i do a check-in for me and so i just stick to it so that's very very consistent and i'm able to compare what's happening from kind of day to day and check in to check in so it's more um more concrete information without allowing too many variables into play so for those who don't know if you drink water at a certain time of day or a little bit later that can affect the weight that can affect how much you're pooping the day before the day of your check-ins when you eat the last meal is your body still digesting all those things kind of matter so what y'all are probably learning at this point is how much an attention to detail can help you progress especially when you get to a certain level you got to be really really neurotic about those details if you want to get to a higher level if you're cool being like oh i'm cool being good all right, that's the thing. But if you try to be great or be the best, again, that requires a different type of tax and a different type of mindset in general. So that's an update on that. Let's see. Yeah, one thing I've also to oh, I also noticed that I did a bump in my caffeine. This is the lowest my caffeine has ever been since I started taking caffeine. A while ago a while as low my caffeine has ever been especially this late into a prep um, so that's pretty been pretty cool to see just the differential between these preps and the last preps in terms of my energy level because half the scoop of liposide is getting me through the entire day even with the food changes even with the cardio bump and the cardio bump was like 10 minutes but again 10 minutes can be a lot um, for your system so just the, even with the cardio bump, I've noticed that the energy has just been great overall. And I've also gotten through, because prep goes in phases. For me, I don't necessarily have a like a 
energy slump or anything like that but there's a time where i can tell there's a shift before i'm making a big drop it's always like that whole little thing where like you keep pushing the, the wall until you give it a little bit of give but you got to keep pushing the wall keep pushing it keep pushing it until it breaks through and then you're on the other side so i'm pretty much on the other side of my prep where for me there's a lot of us always talk about oh you got to feel like you're dying in prep and da, 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 you're going to war I'll, no now for some people it may feel like that for me it's never felt like that it will never feel like that because it's just not gonna feel like that for me it also depends on how you prep and i think the way that i prep in terms of the year-round dieting the the 24 um seven 365 conditioning type of cardio i do when i get to the end it's like you're already you prepare for the entire year for this one preparation and so since I prepared this entire time, I didn't take a time off or do anything like that. It allows me to feel better in preps and it allows my body not to be as jarred by all the different changes that can happen when the body already doesn't want to be a certain weight or a certain body fat. So I think the long, the way I've gone about my longevity has helped me in preps. And so when people ask me like, oh, what's it like to prep or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it really is just like brushing my teeth at this point it's just something that you do you know how to do it you get up you do it rinse and repeat twice a day once a day for those who only do once a day but you just keep doing the same thing so it's not anything that requires a lot of thought for me um other than analyzing how to be better so that's pretty much all the thought that goes into it for me so again some people like i said will feel a little bit more lethargic and preps but that is not the the i wouldn't say it's the goal but a lot of people try to make that their goal like you should be feeling like you should just be feeling like poo the whole time and i don't, I don't think that's the case yeah for me though but to each his own all right so what i've also noticed too so went over the lipo side up that and that also up in the lipo side also helped with, it didn't draw my sleep as much which was good because that's why i waited till my body was ready to up the caffeine and why i needed it but that's also a testament to your year-round conditioning towards a certain goal so that's why i get off of caffeine once the show is over with so by the time i actually need it i'm not shooting my adrenals out the roof and i'm making sure my body is ready for it and is responsive to it when i need it to push to the next level and keep pushing so that's another reason why i don't have my caffeine going year-round and i use it sparingly when i need to actually in prep so what i've also noticed too as we've gone through each prep is every time in prep i i one of the reasons i feel like i feel great is because when you carry as much muscle as i do on a frame of my size you don't realize how much work that actually is so <laughs> it's like when you get a little bit of extra fat and extra and really not even just extra fat just weight up off of you in general it's almost like you get a second wind where it's, you just can move a little more freely and the more you move freely the harder you can work the harder you can move and the more progress you make so it's kind of like a, a circular effect of losing the weight you push harder you push hard to lose the weight then you keep pushing harder as you keep getting that progress and keep getting that progress but it allows you to move more functionally and that's one thing i learned even in my track day so i was a 100 hurdler and 300 hurdlers in um high school but i learned because they were always like say don't don't get too big too, don't get too big but i was like why are you saying that i'm like it's just because the muscle but i'm like okay now as an adult i can look back and see like no they were saying don't get heavier because as a hurdler you generally want to keep the same amount of weight on your frame so that way your technique didn't have to shift and your body was able to attack the hurdle the same way each time because you knew how much weight you were carrying over the hurdle so it's more so a physics thing more so than like a massage anything <laughs> so i know that now but it took some time but even now it's just you just feel good i think that's a large reason why i feel so good towards the ends of preps my i pretty much always have energy i've taken maybe half a nap so far but i'm i haven't napped seriously in probably the last three to four preps and i used to be a serial napper like i used to nap all the time and it seems like as I've gotten healthier and healthier throughout these years and my preps have gotten more 
I wouldn't even say it's not even the preps. My preps have always been good, but I'm thinking it's because of the changes that I've made during the improvement season that allow me to have better preps. So it just makes everything so much easier. Instead of making everything a fight, you just kind of just go ahead and move with the punches. So I think that was pretty cool to note. All right, I'm doing good with my notes. Doing good with my notes. Okay, last few things. And then I'm gonna go to my Q&As. Cause these updates of course will be a little bit smoother so that way i can go rest we're gonna do this video and then we'll do a video next week to kind of wrap everything up so that way i can get ready to focus on me keeping it cute and keep it on mute and get those shirts online cakefactoryfitness.com we have just released my olympia 2024 shirts so that's gonna be super exciting so for those who are either at the Olympia, just want to support me in general, or watching on the live stream. It's my Olympia 2024 shirt. So basically, how I'm trying to do it is if you buy the shirt, you can get on my website. I'll put the link below. For the people who are in person, if you buy the shirt, I ideally want to time it to where we can all meet outside. Not necessarily the venue, but outside where the show is, like in the lobby area where people take pictures and we all take one big group picture together, but that requires you to get the shirt. So. If you want to get the shirt, I'll put the link below, but we just released that. I posted it on Instagram, but as we know with Instagram, well, I don't know if y'all know this, but it will suppress content that doesn't have you in it. If it seems like too businessy, it will suppress the conference. Look, look, Laura, what did I just say? It will suppress the content. That's what I meant to say. So I'll post it again in my story so that you can see it, but it'll also be in the link below so that way you're able to access the shirt, purchase the shirt, and be ready to Support me going into this next Olympia. Back to what we're talking about. So we're also at this point in prep, since we are kind of where we are in prep, I won't go into full details of all the, the fun little things that I've learned so far. I'll go into those details on the post-show vlog. So we're doing one after the O, oh, probably when I'm back in town and we're settled out from Vegas and I can able to kind of decompress a little bit more. We'll go through all the details of like, without the first time you hear what weight was actually what, what the differences were, where I was at what point. We'll go through all those details at the end, which I'm really excited to talk about. Because again, I do research on everything. I go back to weights from two years ago, weights back from one year ago, just so I can see kind of what the differentials are. And then in my mind, me and my coach are able to compare like, oh, at this weight, you looked here. At this weight, you looked here. And it's cool to see even like the muscle maturity and the density and how that affects the look in real time. So that's been a very, very, very cool thing. So as you can tell, if you've been following me on Instagram, I have shifted into what we talked about back in my video about um, being a private post person in the social media world of just, I told y'all that, hey, I'm gonna give y'all some skin in the beginning and at the end, it's gonna be for me. So the last six weeks I plan to and have been doing for the last two, just posting nothing but throwbacks. And the reason I do that is because we're going into the final stretch where this is just my time. Because again, I prep solely for me at this point. This is the first prep where it's just for me and my coach and us just really trying to accomplish yet another goal, accomplish um, breaking our own records. So when you're in that space and even prior to this time, I made sure that my preps are for me, but when I made the switch to give y'all more information, give y'all more insight, that, did, now I wouldn't say detracted. I thought it was going to detract from my experience, but I would say it hasn't detracted. Has it improved it? No. Um, but it's been cool to see that I can still be in a happy place and still give to y'all like I'm doing now. So that's been cool to see that I'm able to do both and balance it way better than I thought I was going to be mentally and physically, but more so mentally and anything. Because physically I'm going to be able to do what I'm going to do. But mentally that was going to be, that was the main, um, I went, oh, that main hang up. That was kind of like, mm, is this going to deter from our process? And it hasn't. So that's been really good. Um, but these last weeks, again, are solely just for me. And in order for me to focus on me, I can't be focused on trying to produce content. What I do, I'll film a bulk of videos far ago, weeks ago, probably three, four weeks ago. And I store them, take the pictures, do everything like that. So that way for the next weeks, I'm like, all right, I have this much content stocked up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this video, put this here, and all I have to do is decide what I wanna post on that day and plug that in for Instagram and TikToks and YouTube and you just kind of 
do everything. Since I'm my own social media manager, I just kind of put everything together and put everything in their places. So that is to basically just make sure that I am able to have my time, enjoy my process, and enjoy the last few weeks of prep so that way I'm able to show up my best for y'all. Y'all are able to cheer on the best me because at the end of the day, if I get distracted or let anything kind of take away from my process, that can result in a look that I don't necessarily love as much as I could have. So I always take that into account of making sure that at the end of the day, I'm an athlete first. I've kind of battled with doing athlete and being more so social media forward but I've kind of gotten it a little bit more balanced but at the end of the day I'm still an athlete first and so that's what I really focus on and just find, keeping that balance and making sure that that stays where it needs to so that I'm mentally focused and ready to go ahead and go for my eighth title at my 11th Olympia so it's been a good little minute also during this week as you can tell I've got my Cleos in so basically what I do is generally before I got my hair locked, I would always get my Cleo. So if you don't know who Cleo is, you need to go back and watch Set It Off. It's the best movie out there. Love it. Um, I would get my hair done, but that was always my signature for like, all right, prep is starting. It's about to get real. We're going to go ahead and get that done. So what I did was once my hair got locked, I didn't have to necessarily get my Cleo's anymore because my hair was already locked. I just throw it up a ponytail. My hair is always pretty much done because it's locked. And you're still in the ponytail and you keep moving. But what I had to do was, with the thickness of my hair, I had to make sure that I'm able to get my hair under my unit, aka wig, for a stage. So that way I am ready to rock and roll. So again, part of my planning is making sure my final look is where we need to be. And I never want to be one of those people with the wigs that be sitting up like a little helmet on their head. We're not going to do that. So I went to my lady. I was like, okay, let me get a deep condition treatment yesterday. And then let's do a practice braid set so we can see like what this will look like. So she did our practice braid. They don't gotta be cute, but I'm just like, how flat can we get it? So where I put my wig cap on, throw my wig on, we had the ba ba boom, and we go on merry little day. Get off snake, snatch the wig off, and be good to go. So that was basically why I had to get my Cleo's this time to one see how tender my head was. I've noticed that since I got my locks, my hair does not like to be tugged in any direction. It's like leave me alone, leave me down, don't do too much and leave me alone. So that's how I got it braided down yesterday to see what everything looks like. So I tried my wigs on, everything fits perfectly. So I'll leave these in for a couple of days. I'll probably take them out on Wednesday so I can see kind of what the braid out looks like because I was planning to wear my locks once I got off stage, wear my locks out for like my rest of my photo shoots for the rest of the weekend. But I gotta see how the braid out is once we get out of these cornrows just so I can see exactly how it looks for my, my photo shoot on Saturday and my photo shoot on Sunday. So that is a part, also another part of my journey of getting everything together, having all my plans set, I make sure my waxes are set, the eyebrow appointments are set, hair appointments are set, all that stuff I pretty much got set probably a month and a half ago. So I make sure all that is organized going into the final steps of uh, prep and making sure that every all my ducks are in a row and everything is picked up and ready to, to go and I'm controlling pretty much everything that I can control. So that is why my hair is like so, so, so far it wasn't too tender. Like it wasn't, it was an adjustment at first, but I still slept good. I still slept good. So yeah, so these are the Cleo's. You can Google Cleo if you don't know who she is. Anyway. That's what I was talking about. So we shall see, but those are all the updates we are going to give today. And now we are gonna go into, do, 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 do. oh, no, I, oh, one more thing. And so at this part of prep, since we've already like made so much progress throughout these last weeks, we've now shifted into the part of prep where, like before I would have set days of like, all right, this time we're eating, like say it's like two low days, three low days, four low days, and this is your high day. That would go like that. So now we've tossed it out the window. And what happens is my coach is saying, he'll look at me in the morning. He'll be like, all right, you're going to eat this today. Or we'll check in this last couple of weeks. We checked in twice a week. And I've lost weight every single check-in, which is <laughs> definitely new for me. But it's been cool to see. So losing weight every single check-in has allowed us to be like, all right, the body is really firing. Everybody, everything is ready to go. And that's not even just losing weight after like low days. It's losing weight after high days too consistently. Every high day I've had, I've lost weight right after. So it's showing me that my body is ready to move forward and ready to keep on taking on the food. And it's really in the mode of fat loss, which is cool to see. We're at this point in prep where my food could change literally every single day. 
and we go based off what the weight says, the body says, what the look that my coach is trying to attain is, and then he'll just tell me, all right, this time you're doing a high day. They say you're going to do a low day. You're going to do this many low days. No, all right, we're going to do this high day. So it allows him to kind of just go where my body wants it to go, and we get to the final look at the end of prep. But that's the key thing of why being here is so important because I photograph differently. I video differently. Me in person is different than all those other two things. So it makes a big difference when I'm here in person so he's able to see me in real time and be able to count for muscle maturity, account for density, and to make sure he's seeing where my conditioning is every single day going into the show. So that way we fine tune those last little bit of details and we bring a look that y'all have not seen from me before and we're better than last year. So that's always the goal. So it's fun, but I will say back in the day um, when he first started doing that, probably like five years ago, I was like, mm, that's not what the plan says. But it's like, I learned to adapt and I, I learned that it's it's fun. If I knew it was gonna be a part of my journey, I was like, okay, just have fun with it and allow this part to help you grow and help you to release some of the strains that you put on everything <laughs> and allow your coach to coach. And so that's when I always like, okay, the plan is plan, yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm aware that in a part of this plan, he's gonna change the plan if it needs to be changed. And at the end of the day, if that gives me more food, I will work for more food. I don't care if my cardio doesn't change at all. If you give me more food, that's what I'll work with. So I'm really excited for this look. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So, <laughs> all right, let's get to these questions. So, one question was, what was ner more nerve wracking? Your, limp your first Olympia or going on Survivor? Great question. I would say I was, I was shaking like a stripper my first Olympia backstage. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I, mean, I probably gained 10 to 15 pounds before stage before walking on stage and it was all water because it all disappeared by the time the night show happened i was like i was a water buffalo so that experience was like you're standing backstage and you're like this is actually happening what you dreamt is happening like in real life and so i think that was very much nerve-wracking but i would say survivor was more nerve-wracking because before, most people don't know this, before I went on Survivor, I didn't know how to swim. So they were like, oh, can you learn how to swim? And I was like, sure. And so I tried to learn how to swim like a month before we flew out. So that would be more nerve-wracking because it was pretty much life or death every time I touched the water. So the first time I jumped into the water, and then mind you, I had to jump into the water, fake like I could swim, and blend in to make sure that it wasn't a target on my back at the same time. Now I can swim really well. Um, but back then I would say survival would probably be the, the most nerve wracking because it was literally life or death and I could have drowned on the spot. So, but again, that's why I say do it scared. Cause I was like, mm, F it, jump in. And that's what I did. But that's pretty much how I live most of my life. If you're scared to do it, just go ahead and do it. And then another question, did posing come natural to you? Your flow is unmatched, best in the game. Well, thank you. Um, posing definitely did. I've been a dancer my entire life. Um, I started posing, I started doing bodybuilding posing when I was six years old because my parents were bodybuilders. There was no other category besides fitness at the time. Um, so my parents were bodybuilders, so I learned all those poses. As I would say, I started fine tuning my craft more as I aged in the sport. I was already posing coaching by the time I was 16, so I've run my business for a very, very long time at this point. It skyrocketed, of course, closer to my first Olympia title, and after that, I, it, it blew up from that point forward to where we are now. Um, but in terms of my attention to detail, putting bodies in place, and allowing people like myself to have imbalances and things like that, and getting them straight, which other coaches couldn't necessarily do because especially when you're dealing with people who have like a short leg or scoliosis or lordosis or spinal conditions or anything, have any type of imbalance, a lot of coaches don't know how to, one, what it feels like and how to course correct it, especially if it's online. A lot of people can do it in person, but online is a different thing because you have to learn that everybody responds differently. Everybody's communication style is very, very different. So when you are a communicator, you have to know how to shift what words are actually working for that person. When you have to pivot and use a different type of um, style to make sure that that person's understanding what you're saying, especially when it's through the phone. And you have to find what really works for their brain to connect with the movement. So 
I would say it definitely came naturally more so the teaching comes really naturally but the posing is even more natural because of my dance background and just pretty much how I've always been flowy my entire life. I always move slowly. I move at my own pace. I've always been that type of person. Even when I was a baby, my mom would tell you I, I was in the, the belly like this. She always says. So I think that came very, very naturally to me. And even just dance in general, movement in general, performing in general comes um, pretty natural to me, even though I am more introverted majority of the time. But when it's time to extrovert, it's like a whole other persona. That's why I do uh the wigs the makeup all that stuff it's very much not me um i love a good wig don't get me wrong i do love a good wig but generally i'm walking around in corn worlds and let my locks be free and my hair be free um but it's more so a stage persona that i put on and that is a part of the posing all right we'll do two more questions um question was one can you talk about your training goals you don't train super heavy anymore so I always get the question of, or the comment, oh, you train so light, you train so light. Light is relative. Nobody knows what light is for somebody else. If it was five pounds and that was heavy for me, you have no idea if that's heavy for me or not. So when people make comments like that to other people, not just myself, because I don't care, but when you make comments like that in general to other people, it can kind of be like, oh, they're trying to say I'm not working hard or things like that for other people. Um, but I think that people also have to keep in mind that everybody's goals are different. Everybody's weight distributions are different. Everybody is just different. So what somebody needs to do for them is not what you need to do for you. So when it comes to me in particular, I've already been at maintenance for four years pretty much. So when I'm training, my focus is never to, oh, let me grow, grow, grow. The only time we want to grow anything was when we wanted my shoulders to be a little more dense. So I would train differently for those. Like for my shoulder days, the main shoulder day before I add in two, usually it's only one a week. Um, I've been doing the same shoulder workout for three years straight. I'll add in different variations of it. Um, but that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I do the same movements all the time, same basic movements. Again, foundation is the foundation. You do your foundation movements and build from there and progressively overload and kind of keep it simple that way but for every other body part it's really just about maintenance and so i do what is intense for me and what's going to keep me from growing as much muscle as possible in the improvement season while my food is extremely extremely high i want to make sure that i'm able to stay within the parameters of my category and make sure that i am not blowing out my look and my look is very much athletic but it's shapely in fitting the guidelines for the figure category so I make sure that my training matches that. So if you do need to grow, you're not going to be able to train like me. You could do some of the movements, but your amount of weight may be different for you. Uh, the amount of reps may be different for you. You may not need to do 50 reps, but that's just what I do in order to maintain my physique and keep me from getting any bigger, but while but still allowing me to have that intensity that allows me to keep my body fat in check and keep my heart in check and make sure that I'm still getting stronger in some facet. How many years did it take to get to the point you just need to slightly tweak and maintain? Um, I've been training since I was 14, 13 years old. I did my first show at 14. So I was in a more so stereotypical go heavy all as much weight as you can put on the bar type of realm for at least a decade. Yeah, at least a decade. I would say 12 years, 12 years total, because probably by the time I had gotten out of my, no, yes, because by the third Olympia, so yes, I was 24, my first win, 25, my second, 26, my third. So by about 25 to 26 is when we started going more so into maintenance realm. So that is basically 12 years of going as heavy as I possibly can. In a mix of that, I also was training my track team in college where we did strictly powerlifting. That was your power cleans, your push jerks, your um, cleaning jerks, all that stuff. All like the power, like the functional power movements was what I did for four years straight in the midst of those 12 years. So all that did make a difference and I was doing bodybuilding training on top of that as well. So when people think about what you need to do for your body, it really depends on your background. It depends on your genetics. It depends on the sports you've done. It depends on basically how you have moved your body throughout those years prior to you wanting to compete. And once you kind of analyze that and see what you need to do, that will determine what your guidelines are. So you may not be able to train like me 
but you can take little pieces where you need it but again it's always making sure that you're fine-tuning your training to what your goals are and if you need to grow you will train differently than I do so those are all the questions we're going to answer for today I'm going to go rest we are less than four weeks out from my 11th Olympia and we will follow back next week I'm gonna post the next one a little bit earlier um, this is my last week of work coming up so I am excited to mellow everything out it's my last Portuguese class on Friday and I will pick that back up once the show is over because I want my again my brain to be focused solely on me eat sleep rinse repeat get up do the same thing get to the show and do what I came to do so that's where we're at right now. That's my quick update for today. I hope this one wasn't too long. I think it's definitely shorter than the last one. Anyway, I am out. Happy Sunday. Bye.